What's going on, Washington family? Today is Thursday, and we're going to be talking about what the Washington Commanders need to do to get this dub and continue this win streak that they've been on. Before I get into that, I need you all to like, comment, and subscribe. And I want to give a special shout out and uh, <clears throat> appreciate a shout out to everybody who has shown love so far. Like I always say in every video, make sure we continue to support each other because believe it or not, there are people out there that don't know about the team. And let's just continue to, you know, um, support one another so we can continue to grow this am amazing fan base, man and bring the, the fans who still don't believe, bring them out of retirement. You know, man, and get the the Washington fan base back, you know, jumping like it was back at RFK. I, I'm not old enough to, you know, have seen those days, but I would love to, you know, replicate that. <clears throat> Again, so we're just going to be looking at um the injury report, of course, and I'll be – Given my perspective on what I think the commanders need to do to win the game Friday, well, tomorrow I'll be giving my prediction and, you know, everything like that. So today, like I said, injury report, giving my take on what I think we need to do to win the game. And I'm going to touch on some other things that I've found out and read. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see here, 21 day uh, practice window for McGee and Obata last week. Both players were full participants in practice again. So we may have some help on the defensive side, specifically the front seven, which has been playing a lot better the last couple games. So that is a big plus. Um, I, again, I would love to see McGee. About it, yeah, especially him as a pass rush, I would love to see him too. Just get these guys in the mix. They'll, of course, they'll probably be on snap counts. We're not looking for them to come in and be productive right away if they are that is a again a plus because we're going up against two-time mvp the most explosive elusive quarterback the game has seen in a while mr lamar jackson himself <clears throat> and on the other side we have our boy jd5 the youngest in charge <laughs> let's just put it like that uh, just looking at the injury report we have for darian mathis uh, he did not participate on Thursday due to an illness. Tyler Owens, uh, shin injury. He did not practice or participate on Wednesday, Thursday. Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson, I believe this is going to be <clears throat> what he does probably until the, at least the bye week. Uh, it doesn't appear to be anything serious, but it, this is football. If you play sports before, we, you know we get... So there's a difference between being hurt and injured. Uh, obviously, he's hurt, so he, these are more like rest days. And again, we're talking about a knee, running back. You know, that's it's serious, but the injury's not serious itself. Um, so I think we can expect this at least until the bye week, unless, you know, things start to get better or either worse. I think this is what it's going to be for Brian Robinson. But he did, did not uh, participate on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, let's see, Nick Allegretti, same thing. This has been an ongoing situation that, with his ankle. He did not, participate, did not participate on Wednesday, but he was limited on Thursday. Noah Brown, limited Wednesday and Thursday. So it looks like we're going to have Noah Brown back uh, unless something unforeseen happens. Uh, Percy Butler, limited as well. Look like he's going to play Cleveland Farrell. Okay, look like he's slowly progressing. So I think we have to wait at least until Friday to see, you know, what the status is. But I think push come to shove, he'll probably be a game time decision uh, if he's not um, a full participant on, on Friday. If he's limited, he'll probably be a game time decision. Or we'll, we'll see. He might even be on a snap, a uh, pitch count. Who knows? Um, but man, just think, man, just think about it. Let's look at it. So we may be getting Cleveland Furl back. We may be getting F.A. Obama back and Jordan McGee. And just think about how the defense has played the last two games. Well, you know what? I hate to say the last game because the Cleveland Browns offense. Well, you know what? Deshaun Watson sucks. I hate to say it. 
because a lot of people are saying, oh, the commanders haven't play, played anybody. They haven't played anybody. The only team I'll say who who is quote unquote anybody, well, the I'll say one player, Deshaun Watson is man, he's bad, man. That was hard. It was hard to watch. I mean, I'm glad my team won, but Deshaun Watson is, is very hard to watch. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh Quan Bart, I'm glad to see he's limited, so it looks like he's probably gonna play. Uh, he left the game a little early uh, last week. Austin Ackler, he's going to play. He's come back from a concussion, but this time his injury is a heel injury. Emmanuel Forbes, the injury that he had a couple weeks ago, but again, he's full. Dante Fowler, full. He's come back from an illness. McGee, full. Obata, full. So, man, it's, man, we are starting to get stronger. Um, as the weeks go on and this is we're getting stronger in the right place we're getting stronger on defense where we were struggling so at some point the offense is going to slow down but as we can see the defense is starting to get better it's starting to play better you know together and at some point we are going to start making teams turn the ball over we're going to start catching these interceptions because this is just what joe witt does like this check his check his track record this is what he does at some point, we are going to start to get interception. And if you play ball and if you watch football long enough, you know it only takes one interception. Then they just start to just come just, you know, simultaneously back to back to back to back. So all we need is one. We've been close. The guy just got a man. And you know what? I said this last week. I love Joe Witt as a defensive coordinator because what? He is getting through to his players. Everything that he's saying in these uh, press conferences is translating and is transitioning into the game. Like, just listen to what he's saying. He said something about the screen game. We stopped the screen game. He said something about the runs up the middle. We played uh, the last game, he, and we did, we did better. You know, we weren't great, but we did better. Um, now he's continuing, he continu he's continuously saying something about the turnover. He said, you know, I don't, I don't know last time I... I I went this long without an interception, so maybe I got to change some things up. The fact that he's harping on it, he's um, he's going to drill these guys until they, you know, actually get it. And, you know, interceptions, it's, it's easy to say go out and catch the interception, but, you know, you also need ball hogs. You need playmakers in the secondary. Um, Quan Martin has been a, a dog. Uh, Sandstrom, he's still young, but once he starts to get it, in his natural position, with his in, which is inside, he's going to be um, phenomenal. Um, Manuel Forbes is. I don't want to say this because it, this is just old news, and it's just not something that I should be saying at this particular time while, while we're doing, <coughs> while we're playing the way that we've been playing. But if any more, Manuel Forbes is probably not going to be on this team next year. Same thing with Jamie Davis. I don't see them on this team next year. I just wanted to say that. I don't want to get too in depth into it because it's not, it's not something that should be talked about right now. I just wanted to say that though. Um, but Emmanuel Ford, when he came out of college, he was a ball hawk. That's when I looked, and I was surprised. I was puzzled on why we didn't get uh, Gonzalez because I knew that Gonzalez. After I looked and I watched, I was like, okay, yeah, this this is the guy we get. He looks good. Sure. So for some reason, we passed on him, um, and you can see what he's doing now. <laughs> uh, but then when they drafted Ford, I was like, okay. You know, they, they haven't had a uh, turnover the last, so this is what they want. They want a guy who, you know, turn a, a, the, the offense over. How many interceptions does Emmanuel Forbes have in his career? That's enough on Emmanuel Forbes. I just wanted to ask that. But, um, yeah, so we're getting stronger in all the right places defensively, you know. Uh, I would love to see a trade, but on my last video, like I said, I, it's not likely, but I would love, it doesn't have to be a big name or a splash, a splash player. I would love to see a trade, though, on the offensive side. I don't know, maybe we can go get a, a tight end. Maybe we can go get a, a receiver who's not going to cost us that much or require, you know, um, high, dra high draft capital. And those things I would like to see. Yeah, I would like to see a tight end or maybe a wide receiver. Uh, as far as offense, that's probably it's probably it right now. Um, on defense, maybe a, a DN or you know a corner. I like this, but again, not guys who are going to break the bank or require us to um, send away draft capital that we're going to need to continue to build this team. 
Now, a uh, couple of things that I believe the commanders are going to have to do. Okay, so first and foremost, the Ravens. Um, the Ravens are a good team. But they are not a great team. They're not an unbeatable team. Like, and see, here's the thing. People say that we haven't played anybody. So I'm going to touch on that first. We haven't played on anybody, okay? They say the only team we played was Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay caught us in week one where guys did not play together during the preseason. This was, this was really, a, that was a preseason game, honestly, for us. Uh, when we face a team that really has, you know, all their players, they play, they had all their players returning for the most part. So we got a disadvantage, whatever. We lost that game. After that, we play the Giants, right? The Giants, um, we kick seven field goals. Again, it's like another preseason game. We're still trying to, we're still trying to learn each other, you know, play together as a team. But we won the game. Well, we almost let one person beat us, man. Malik Neighbors almost did it to us. Um, but that same Giant team, I guess they're nobody. That same nobody team just went to Seattle and beat Seattle without their best player on offense, which is Malik Neighbors. They're nobody. Uh, the next team we played was the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals came in. They were defeated. <laughs> they didn't win their game. Um, it was a close game. They, they could have went either way with us, but we, we ended up beating them. Uh, that same team took these Ravens into overtime. That same Cincinnati Bengals team held Derrick Henry in check until overtime. That same Bengals team had a chance to win the game, but they missed the field goal. Hey, but this is a... They're nobody. It's the team that we play. They're nobody. Then we went and played the Arizona Cardinals. Or was it the Cardinals first? I don't know. But in, in, either way, uh, we played the Arizona Cardinals. Where the Cardinals were coming into the game. Oh, Kyler Murray is in the MVP conversation. Oh, this uh, Cardinals offense is smoking. And they're this and that. And yeah, Washington doesn't stand, stand a chance. So so how, how are we playing nobody? But we have been the underdog in every game. But we have prevailed we came up on, out on top but we're the nobody we play nobody that same nobody Cardinals team when they beat the 49ers now the Browns again the Sean Watson is arguably the worst quarterback in the NFL right now Sean Watson is, is bad he should be locked up now for the massage uh, uh, thing that, or incident. He should be locked up for stealing money from the Browns. I can go out there and do what he's doing. Like, it's pitiful. So I won't even mention the Browns. If y'all want to say nobody to the Browns, I give y'all that one. The Browns are bad, specifically Deshaun Watson. Uh, so, yeah, like I was saying, the, uh, the, the Ravens, they aren't this unbeatable team. You look at their schedule, they lost against the, against the Chiefs. Okay, I'll give them that. They played the Chiefs, they lost. Um, and they barely lost. They could have won it. But then you go home to m &T Bank, and you lose to one of the worst teams in football, the Raiders. And the, uh, Devontae Adams had a game on y'all. Y'all let Gardner Minshew go to work on y'all. The Ravens have... I think the second worst pass defense in the league, either the worst or the second worst. But their pass defense is not good. But then you got guys like Roquan Smith saying, oh, yeah, Jay Daniels, he's good and all that, but he has to face a defense. Like, what? Like, why? when are these guys going to understand that you do not want to give that young guy and the commanders any bullets and board material? The last team, the last person that did that, he got embarrassed on national television. Now, Bo Cron Smith better be lucky that this game is not prime time or Monday Night Football or anything like that. Oh, that's all I want to say. Like, yeah, I'm talking that I'm, I'm standing on business because my team has my team has showed me that they're not the same team that they used to be. 
And then I'm looking at, okay, this this so vaunted defense, right? The one that's giving them all these passing yards. But then I go and look at the run defense. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. The number one, they're only giving up 60 yards. I was like, oh, my God, that's kind of scary, 60 yards. But then I'm looking, who have they played? You play the Chiefs. We all know the Chiefs love to throw the ball. The Chiefs can run the ball. They can run the ball. But they prefer to pass the ball. They are, good, they are a decent running team, but they prefer to pass the ball. Um, so you play the Chiefs. Then after that, you play the Raiders. <laughs> then you play the Buffalo Bills. Then you play the Cowboys. Like well, I'm, I'm waiting to, the, the, these teams. I'm waiting to find a team where then you, then, then you play the Bengals. Which one of those teams compared to what the Washington Commanders have in the backfield? Which one of those teams have a dominant running back or have running backs? None of those teams compared to what the Washington Commanders could do on the ground. There's a reason we're number two right behind Baltimore in rushing. One thing I can guarantee is that the, the Ravens are not holding the commanders to their 60-yard per game rushing defense that they have. It's not happening. The commanders will be able to run the ball. It's, they're not going to run it like they did against you know the other teams, like the Bengals and the Browns, but they're going to be able to run the ball. And they're going to, and even if they only get three yards, guess what? They're going to continue to run the ball and, and set up the pass. But again, this team is not no juggernaut team. They're not undefeated like the Chiefs. They're not, you know, no, they're, they're, no. They have a phenomenal, sensational quarterback in Lamar Jackson. They have a, 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 a Hall of Fame running back in Derrick Henry. Um, Besides that, they have oh, they have another Hall of Famer in Justin Tucker, a kicker. Uh, but apparently he's having an off year, to his standards anyway. Um, besides that, nothing else scares me about this team. Zay Flowers, okay, he's, he's fast. Now, don't get me wrong, Lamar loves his tight ends. He loves his tight ends. He loves his tight ends. But... Again, I'm not going to get into specifics until tomorrow. Typically, when I get my predictions, when I look at the, the, the numbers and then I really get my insight based off the numbers and what I know and what I've seen, what I've read, that's when I'm going to get more in depth. But this team is... The, so the best defensive team that we faced would be between the Browns and the Giants. They were pretty good, too. The Giants are pretty good. But the Ravens, they do not... Nah. I'm sorry. Now, the Ravens are going to be able to put that. So, this is the Ravens remind me of. Okay, so take the Arizona Cardinals offense, take the Cleveland Browns defense. What do we do against the Cardinals offense? We shut them down. They scored what? Seven points in the first drive, and what, seven again? They scored a garbage touchdown at the end. The only difference between the Cardinals and the Ravens is that Lamar Jackson. That is it. The Cardinals have a decent. Oh, uh, wide receiver with Marvin Harrison, so do the um, Ravens. The only difference is another difference is that the tight ends, Lamar loves tight ends, but tight ends they're not gonna. <sighs> and then the Cleveland defense. What do we do to the Cleveland defense? Eventually, when we figured them out, and the Cleveland Browns and the uh, Ravens love to run this man concept on defense. What happened? The Commanders torched them. So not only are they prepared from playing previous teams that are similar to the Ravens, like the Ravens just, they're then, again, they're not this team that they think they are, in my opinion. And I'm not saying this because I'm biased because I like the team. I'm just being real. And this is, this is, this is really what it is. The Ravens, like they, they, they went at home and lost to the Raiders. They, so they can be beat. Again, so... Guys, that's really my take on this. Again, tomorrow I'm going to have a, you know, more statistical video where I'll be able to actually look at the numbers and give you a, a pretty accurate score like I did last week and um, just give you my take on everything as looking at the analytics and everything. But I just wanted to come out here and say that everybody saying we haven't played anybody. The Ravens are supposedly this... 
this unbeatable team some somehow, but they're three and two. Uh, anyway, man, that's that's all I gotta say about this video, man. Uh, again, make sure y'all consider like. I mean, I hope y'all consider liking and subscribing. Um, again, stay tuned for the video I'm dropping tomorrow. And again, I appreciate all the support so far, man. See y'all tomorrow.